So there are two equations you need to know about for waves. We've got velocity equals frequency times wavelength, or V equals F lambda, and also that frequency is equal to one over the time period, and we use a capital T to show the time period for one wave cycle. Now for these ones here, I've just used the equation, plugged the numbers in, I've got my final answers here, uh, all of which are to two significant figures. This one here is really important, three times 10 to the eight, or 300,000 thousand meters per second. That's the speed of light, or indeed any electromagnetic wave in a vacuum. So that's gonna come up all the time. For the table here, uh, we used uh, either this, this, or this equation uh, to work out the velocity, wavelength, or frequency. Um, note as well that for the first four uh, answers, we used two significant figures, like the data here. For the last one though, uh, we had three significant figures, which is why I gave my final answer to three significant figures as well. And when you're looking, especially at electromagnetic waves, because we have very high speeds, we've often got very short uh, wavelengths and really high frequencies. So it's really worth getting to grips with using standard formula calculator for these. Now on the second side, we've got a question where we've got a sound wave which is being emitted, hitting the end of a cave and then being reflected. And although the distance might be 99 meters, the distance traveled by that wave is 99 meters times two. So don't forget multiplying that by two to work out the time it took to get there and get back again. But we can then use this value here because we know the time and we know how many wave cycles occurred to work out the time for one wave cycle. And then I just did one over that time period there to find that this was 2000 Hertz. So often with sound waves, we have really high frequencies. And this then allowed us to work out the sound wave using V equals F lambda, that wave speed equation. Uh, for this one down here, uh, the first thing we did was we just multiplied the frequency uh, times the wavelength to find this answer here, which is about 3.00 times 10 to the eight. That is a really important number. Again, it's the speed of light but it's also the fastest speed that is possible for anything to go. Nothing can travel faster than that. The physics gets really weird, but that means that if you increase the frequency, we don't increase the speed of the wave. Instead, what would happen is as you increase the frequency, the wavelength would actually get smaller. So three times 10 to the eight is the fastest speed possible. And then we use this value here um, when we have this wavelength of 950 nanometers. And I've said here that one nanometer is one times 10 to the minus nine meters. You do not need to know that at GCSE, you don't need to remember that, but I think you can have a go at doing questions like this where you've been given data in the question. So that's why it's 950 times 10 to the minus nine, which gives a value of 3.16 times 10 to the 14 hertz to three significant figures. So those were some quite tricky questions about wave calculations.